This video is about Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, also referred as QAM. Let us begin our discussion by considering that we have a messy signal M of T and we modulate it either by means of uh, double sideband pressed carrier, double sideband pressed carrier, or by means of double sideband with large carrier. You can also call it as AM, right? So in both the schemes, so in the double sideband, we have FC and then we have two lobes. At minus FC again, we have these two lobes. So this is the upper side band, and these two are the lower side bands. So the only difference between uh, DSB SC and DSB large carrier is you have everything which is exactly similar, but right now you have one uh, carrier, right? So this carrier is available for AM. And again, you have the upper side band and the lower side band, and uh, this is an even function. So you have the same symmetry over here, in the frequency domain, right? So these are the two models that we have used. Now, both of these models are basically dependent on the message signal. So we had a message signal, which was like this, and this is basically shifted over here and here. So if we look back at the bandwidth of the message signal, so it was from zero to BM. So this was basically the bandwidth of the message signal. So in both double sideband pressed carrier or in uh, AM, that is double sideband large carrier, the bandwidth is from here to here, we have a BM and from here to here, another BM. So this is basically whole thing is two BM. So in both cases, we have two BM of bandwidth of transmission, which is not desirable. If it is not desirable, what are the solutions for this kind of a problem? We need more efficient bandwidth transmission systems, right? So we can go in two different domains. So the first domain is this was our M of F. So we use some kind of a filter to get this signal, which can be M plus of F. So this whole of this is something which we call as single sideband. So now this single sideband is uh, a modulation scheme, which basically when we will modulate and transmit the signal, ideally speaking, we would have a transmitted signal, which would be something like this. That is, we would just have upper sideband. So in the transmission, the bandwidth would be BM after modulation. So that fixed the problem. But the single sideband needs an ideal filter. And it depends on the characteristics of message signal itself. Right. So what kind of message signal is there that would determine whether we can apply single sideband to it or not. So single sideband it looks promising, but it is not the solution in most of the cases. So we have to look into alternate solutions. First and foremost, we cannot create this ideal kind of a filter, right? So if we cannot create this ideal filter, so this means that uh, naturally the single sideband, we cannot basically recreate it uh, fully. So the second possible solution is we can go to an alternate route. We use multiplexing. Right. And what is that multiplexing? So we are saying instead of sending one signal, we are sending two signals. So how do we achieve this multiplexing in QAM? That is, how do we send two message signals? So say we have a message signal M1 of T. So this is the first message signal. And then we have another message signal, which is M2 of T. And then we use a local oscillator. That is simply cos 2 pi FCT, right? So this is our local oscillator. So we use this local oscillator and we multiply 
with the message signal. So over here at this thread, we have a signal which we have already studied. So this is simply M1 of T cos 2 pi FCT. So this is exactly the same thing as we have done in double sideband stretch carrier on the upper branch. But at the same time, we have another signal which is M2 of T. So what we do is we take this local oscillator, we uh, pull a thread from the local oscillator, and then we use a phase shift, right? And that phase shift is basically of minus pi by two. So after the phase shift of pi, uh, minus pi by two, so this function over here would convert to sine two pi FCT. And then we use another multiplier, right? So at this point, we would have the second message signal M2 of T, but now this is multiplied with sine 2 pi FCT, right? And eventually we have uh, the summation of these two, right? And then this is basically transmitted. So at this point, we have M1 of T cos 2 pi FCT plus M2 of T sine 2 pi FCT. So now coming back to the quadrature amplitude modulation, why is it called quadrature amplitude modulation? Why is it called QAM? And specifically, what do we mean by quadrature? See? Quadrature, this simply identifies that we have two orthogonal signals. So wherein those orthogonal signals are basically the cos function and sine function. So they have a phase shift of pi by two or minus pi by two, right? So this and this is basically orthogonal they are having a phase shift of 90 degrees. So this is what identifies as the quadrature uh, component. So the sine is a quadrature component of cos function. So that is why we call this type of a technique as quadrature amplitude modulation. This is the thing that we are transmitting. Over here, we would be having a received signal as well. And then we have to separate M1 of T and M2 of T. So what we are performing here is basically we are performing two things. So firstly, we are doing multiplexing and then we are having this thing which is called a quadrature component. Note that if I plot a waveform over here, so this waveform, say this is our uh, in time domain, this is zero. So say our M1 of T is having this kind of a shape. And so this cost function is basically high frequency. So it would be something like this. On the other hand, for M2 of T, say we are again having the second signal, and this is the origin. Now the sine function or the carrier is basically based on sine. So it would be passing through zero. So we would be having this form. Eventually, we need to separate these two uh, at the end. That was the transmitter. Let us see the receiver. Again, we have an antenna and we are uh, getting back the signal after passing through the channel. So, say we had a channel. Right, so this is our pi q a m of t. So, the noise and uh, the channel would affect this waveform, but Assuming that we have an ideal scenario and uh, that doesn't affect somehow. So we get again phi q a m of t. And then again, we have a local oscillator, right? And this is coherent. That means it's again working on cos 2 pi f c t. So this is our local oscillator. And we bring a thread and use a modulator. So in the upper branch, phi QM of T was M1 of T cos 2 pi FCT plus M2 of T sine 2 pi FCT from here. 
and this whole thing is now multiplied by cos 2 pi fct so let me put a steric 1 here and let us this steric 1 over here so we have basically this cos function multiplied by this uh, the first term and the second term in the first term we would have m1 of t times cos square 2 pi fct plus m2 of t cos 2 pi fct times sine 2 pi fct right so this is just a multiplication of these two terms so from here this is simply uh, m1 of t by 2 plus m1 of t by 2 times cos 4 pi fct that is cos theta is equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 cos 2 theta a trigonometric property and from the second term now we have cos of theta times sine of theta the argument is the same so this is basically 1 by 2 sine 2 theta so we have m2 of t by 2 sine 4 pi fct right so this is basically the outcome of this steric one which is over here note that this is a receiver so we are basically interested in so we are interested in the message signal mm -hmm. so whatever is at 2 pi fct we basically reject it by means of a low pass filter over here we would use a low pass filter and eventually you would have 1 by 2 m1 of t so we have successfully uh, decoded or recovered the first message signal regarding the second part again we have a phase shift minus pi by 2 again we would have a multiplication and in here we would have uh, phi q a m of t times sine of now here we would have a sine 2 pi f c t so this is our steric 2 so in steric 2 sine function is basically being multiplied with all of this so if the sign multiplies with uh, the first term so we would have m1 of t cos 2 pi fct times sin 2 pi fct plus now this sign term multiplies with this term that is again a sign so we would have m2 of t sin square 2 pi f dt right again from the trigonometric properties this first term is simply m1 of t by 2 sin 4 by fct plus from here the sin square theta is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 cos 2 theta right so we would have m2 uh, of t by 2 minus m2 of t by 2 times cos 4 pi fct both of these so we can use a low pass filter to reject these two terms so eventually we would have m2 of t by 2 so over here after passing through a low pass filter we have now 1 by 2 m2 of t. Basically, we were sending m1 of t and m2 of t. So these were the baseband signals. So in the pass band, both of them are uh, multiplexed and uh, using QM technique, we transmit them. So on the receiver side, we receive them and we use some sort of a demux demultiplexing again by means of local oscillator over here right and eventually we get the message signal m1 and m2 of t at two different threads this qam we may segregate into uh, an analog modulation and we also have digital modulation 
so we were having analog modulation so this means that we are having different amplitudes uh, we can define different amplitudes for this local oscillator so we can have different amplitudes over here so this uh, here actually comes under the umbrella of qm but somehow it is much easier to understand in digital phenomena that is we would have some sort of shift keying schemes And we may say this is amplitude shift key. In in this still framework, let us visualize a constellation diagram. I will explain what is a constellation diagram and uh, how we come across it. So we have a component which is basically in phase. So this is I, and then we have a component which is quadrature phase. This is Q, right? So since we are saying this is quadrature phase, so we mean that. The angle between these two is 90 degree. What is I? What is Q? So I belongs to say cos of theta. So if this I belongs to cos of theta, so naturally Q would belong to sine of theta because we have a phase shift of 90 degree. So in this constellation diagram, say we have some symbols. So let me draw some symbols. And then I would have some explanation of those. So let us say this is our symbol one, S1. This is S2, S3, 4, and so on. Now, each of this symbol has a binary code. For example, maybe we can denote this symbol by a binary code, which is 0, 0, 0, 0. That is basically S1. We have this constellation diagram, which can have L number of symbols and these symbols are dependent on the number of bits n, right? So presently we have 16 of these dots. That is, we can have 16 such symbols, right? And the number of bits that we need to identify those 16 is basically four, right? So that is why we have these four bits appearing over here, which identify one given symbol that we define as S1. So the next neighboring symbol is say 0, 0, 0, 0001. The S4 is say 0, 0, 1, 1. S3 is 0, 0, 1, 0, right? Similarly, say this symbol on the lower side, it is 0, 1, 0, 0, and this is 0, 1, 0, 1. Let me fill in uh, the rest of them and then I will explain what they are. Right, so these are the symbols. So now we have sort of a truth table where we have four number of bits and each bit identifies a certain position in this constellation diagram. You may note that I have basically used a kind of a gray code that is this S1 and S2, right? So this, they will have only one bit. That is this last bit is changed to one over here and between these two, now we have a change of one bit, which is a third bit and so on. So each neighboring bit has a chance of one bit, but this is just a coding. So coming back to the in-phase and quadrature phase for this constellation diagram, say we have uh, this S1 that we want to transmit, or th this is the signal that we are representing in the cost diagram. So we can say that this is our S1, and this S1 is having an angle of theta. So we say that S1 is a symbol which is basically having a magnitude. So we have a magnitude, say this is the magnitude of S1. But let's call this magnitude of S. So we have S1 which has a magnitude of S, and then this is cos. 2 pi f uh, c 2 pi f c t plus this theta this angle and this is theta 1 so this is theta 1 right so this is basically the waveform that we can create in 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 the time domain so over here we have a constellation diagram so from here we can create a time domain waveform 
let me just draw one uh, particular waveform. Say we have uh, a waveform which is basically this cos function, and this theta one is some phase shift, right? So say this phase shift is of at this point. Say this is I'm just approximating. Say this is 45 degree, right? So if this is the phase shift of 45 degree, so originally if the cos function was like this. And if we're shifting it by 45 degree to uh, are delaying it by 45 degree, so this will be shifting towards right side. So maybe this point would now move towards right. So would have this waveform, right? And this would be the time period. The symbol S1, we're sending 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So this is our waveform. And this waveform of the signal S1 of T is being represented here in the constellation diagram over here. Similarly, this symbol now it would have this vector, okay, and it would have a magnitude of m s2, and then its angle would be much less than 45 degree, maybe say. 23 degree, right? But right now, this magnitude has increased as compared to this magnitude over here. The magnitude of this green symbol is more, right? So, if we are saying we have S2, so we have magnitude of uh, the symbol that is uh, M2, this was M M1, and then we have cos 2 pi FCT plus theta 2 and theta 2 is actually shifting not by 45 degree but by the 23 or 22 degree right so this means that s of t is somewhat this is going backward a little so we would have this as the time period of the symbol S2, which is 0, 0, 0, 1. But right now, this amplitude is much higher. This is dependent on M2. This was lower and it is M1. Right? So what I'm trying to say is that we have three different type of representations. So we have this time domain representation. Right? So we have time domain waveforms and right now we are visualizing constellation diagram which is over here and of course we can take the Fourier transform so we would have frequency domain spectra so what actually is happening that this is our baseband any this is the message signal that you're transmitting so you're sending this signal over the air, right? So this constellation diagram is a structure that uh, represents the signal which was transmitted over the channel. And then you have the same waveform, but based on this channel plus some noise, so if these symbols were sent, and each of these symbols have this constellation diagram. So the thing that you would receive is not exactly S1, but maybe you would receive somewhere over here. Similarly for S2, you may have some patterns over here. For S3, maybe somewhere over here. And S4 similarly, right? So it originally you said something over here, but based on the noise and the channel characteristic, so the bit actually moved somewhere else. So if in the constellation diagram, this goes to this range, so that means you originally sent S1, but the one that you're going to receive is basically S2, right? So that would be an error. So you need to make sure that you have a smart enough receiver where 
that receiver can detect uh, or, or classify the signal as S1 or S2, right? Otherwise, you need to reduce the number of bits that you're sending or the number of levels that you're sending. So if you have a very high or very sensitive system, like M array uh, shift keying, for example, you have 16 here, 16 here, 16 here, and 16 here. So overall, this is 64 QAM. Right. So if you have this kind of a structure, then you need a very, very sensitive uh, receiver. And if the receiver is not capable enough, then maybe you would like to reduce to four number of bits. That is zero, 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 one, 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 zero. Right. So this is four QAM. Right, so it, it depends. You would find systems which are working on 64, 128, 256 QM, and so on. 